Well, here, they're still lost. They ain't never been caught. I pray they get saved this morning. Please, Lord. Save that soul that's nearest hell. But we that are saved, got a good crowd here this morning. We that are saved, we pray we can be ship fishers of men and win others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. This is John the Baptist talking about here. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. He's a soul winner. And there went out unto him all in the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. So you got to confess your sins, you got to repent, and then you get baptized. Believers' baptism, immersion. Right after you saved, then you get baptized like they did here, like John baptized him. And John was clothed with camel's hair. He's a strange-looking fellow. And with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locust and wild honey. That'd keep you healthy, huh? Yeah. He wasn't eating no chocolate uh, hair, uh, hands or crosses, was he? No. He was eating locust and wild honey. I like honey. I like honey. You, how do you like? I like honey. Wild, I like honey. I like get find it out of the woods or whatever. Just be careful when you try to get it out of the woods if the bees ain't around. You know, <laughs> you'd be in trouble. But honey's good. Locust. How many of you ever ate locust? I ain't never had locust. I don't know. Maybe it's good. I don't know. Did you have it, Tara? Well, it kind of looks like it. I don't hear Mr. Know it all. He knows. Tell us what it is. <clears throat> it's something that looks like grasshopper that comes out once every seven years after hibernation. Right? Oh, okay. Mummy, you you it. it looks like a grasshopper. Anyway, John the Baptist used to eat him and preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me. John the Baptist said, Oh, the mighty one is coming. The anointed one is coming. God incarnate, he's coming. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. See, I, I, ain't, got no, I ain't got no business even tying his shoes. Amen. The mighty one, the holy one, God in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Amen. the Savior of the world. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's what you need, saved person. Uh, the reason you don't win souls is you're not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, if you're a Christian and you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you'll win souls. My wife just told me something I never knew. Uh, Walter Wilson, <coughs> back in the 40s, uh, he, was a, he was a physical, he was a doctor, a physician, but he was a preacher also. But he didn't. He didn't have. He. I always tell this about Walter Wilson in his. Uh, uh, in, and you might have heard me say it if you've been around very long. You've heard me say it. Um, uh, he used to when he counseled people in his office. He had a sign behind his desk behind him when a person was sitting in front of the counsel. It the the sign said this: uh, Why pray when you can worry? <laughs> Think about that a minute. Why pray when you can worry? That's you, isn't it? you worrying and wringing your hands and not sleeping at night. And why don't you pray and get over the worry. Amen? Amen. The Bible says be careful for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto God. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Glory to God. And he says, I, I ain't even got the right to... He's the holy one. I'm the wicked one. He's the holy one. I'm the sinner. He's the righteous one. I'm the foolish, sinful one. God, be merciful to be a sinner. That's what you need to say today. Verse 8, I, I needed to have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Verse 9, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized of John in Jordan. Listen, this is a very important part in Jesus' life. I had a, I had a doctor 
my arthritis doctor, I got a bunch of doctors. You get as old as I am and fat as I am, you got to see a bunch of doctors. And my fault, most of them my fault. I probably, my blood pressure, if I lost weight, I probably wouldn't hit, my knees wouldn't hurt and, and I, my blood pressure wouldn't be high and uh, and all of that, i just too fat, you know, and uh, I just like to eat. Oh, well, my, I'm not really too fat. My problem is I'm too short. I'm just too short. If I, if I was tall as Cliff, I'd probably be all right. <laughs> and straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heaven open and the Spirit like a dove descended upon. See, the Holy Spirit of God come down from heaven. Listen now. Cliff, you, you, you on to something this morning? You never talk so much like this. You got something? You get something last night or what? Huh? He's got a little carryover from last night. He usually don't talk much. He's bothering Jason and bothering uh, Willie there today. So the Holy Spirit come down from, from, from heaven. Be quiet. Holy Spirit come down from heaven and come on to Jesus and filled them. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. And it says that He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Did you know that Jesus won those souls? He, Jesus did nothing until He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I was telling you my arthritis doctor, Dr. C. Uh, he's from, uh, uh, where is he from? He's from an island. Uh, I'll think of it as I'm going on. His wife's a Christian. He's not. I'm trying to get him saved. I talk to him every time I go there trying to get him saved. And so he asked me a question this time. He says, Pastor, I got a question for you. I'm always bothering about getting saved. I like to bother people about getting saved because we're supposed to bother people about getting saved. You see, people get, I don't care if they get mad or not. The Bible didn't say they wouldn't get mad, but the Bible says you're supposed to tell them. Uh, Amen? Amen. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's everybody. You said they're not ready. Okay, but at least you tell them. Amen. You got a responsibility to tell them or not. You don't know. Someone say, oh, I just prayed till I get that right, uh, uh, right one. Everyone's the right one. Preach to everybody. God's not willing any should perish. You got to tell everybody. Okay. The Spirit come down. And, and he asked me this question. He says, Pastor Varga, tell me this. He thought he had me. He says, why is Jesus' life never talked about at all, only the last three years of his life. I said, that's a very, very good question, doctor. The reason is he had no ministry till the last three years of his life. He was 30 years old. He had, he had no ministry. He, he healed no blind eyes. He raised no dead. He felled no multitudes. He, he won no souls. Jesus had absolutely no ministry. Well, he said, I can't figure that out. And I says, I can't either. I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven. <laughs> But God is God, amen? amen. If he just wanted Jesus to have three years of ministry, but he but he showed he was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he says that he'll get that he can fill us with the Holy Ghost and we can get people saved just like he did the three years he was here, amen? amen. Verse eleven, and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, S O N, capital S, Son of God, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father speaking, in whom I am well pleased. He's the only one that never pleased the Father. You know why? Because He's sinless. Because He's God. You and I couldn't please Him. You know, the only, way, uh, uh, the, the, the only way we can come to God is to come to God through the one that pleased Him, His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. See, if you don't come through Jesus Christ, your sins can't be forgiven. You can't go to heaven. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days and tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put into prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, Matthew, we have the gospels. There's four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's three gospels that are called the synoptic gospels. That means... Uh, many of them tell the same story over three times. Well, this story is told over three times. And in Matthew, it tells about Satan actually testing the Lord and, and using Scripture. Remember that when we studied it in Matthew? And, and he said, uh, and, he, and, 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 and he, told, uh, he, he answered Satan. Uh, he was hungry, and he says, the devil told him, take these stones and make it bread if you're God. And, and, and he said, uh, 
uh, Jesus answered him with the Bible, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He answered him with the Scripture. And, 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 then, he, uh, and then he talked about uh, several other things and uh, about diving off a pinnacle. He says, You shouldn't tempt the Lord your God. And, uh, and, uh, and I will give you power and on and on. And then finally, he departed from Jesus says, for a little season, told us that in uh, Luke. And it did what the three different accounts of, of this. This doesn't tell you much of it, just that it happened. Verse 15, and, and the saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's it. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The same thing Jesus said here in Mark chapter 1, I tell you, repent ye and believe the gospel. You've got to repent of your sins. You've got to humble yourselves of your pride and arrogance and wickedness. And, and you've got a wicked heart and repent and believe the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to scriptures. That's it. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting in a net into the sea. For they were fishers. These were fishermen. That was their living. They're professional fishermen. I talked to, uh, uh, I think David probably knew some professional fishermen. He was a boat man there in, uh, uh, down there in uh, Miami and uh, in that area. He was a merchant. Uh, he was a civil, what, what do you call what you were? Merchant Marine. Merchant Marine, yeah. Merchant. A merchant Marine isn't like a government Marine, but it's someone works on boats. But, and then uh, if you go fishing, you usually have something to do with a boat. And that's what these these folks. So you know you know a bunch of fishermen, Dave. Yeah, you knew fishermen. Yeah, you, know, you weren't a fisherman, were you? But you knew a lot of fishermen. Down in Miami, I had a lot of friends. Yeah, he had a lot of friends, fishermen. Uh, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Look at here. I read this. 1978. Where was I? I was at the Big Boy Restaurant. Juno Village, Detroit. Was I in Detroit? No, I was in Milwaukee. I lived in Detroit 21 years, then I lived in Milwaukee for a bunch of years. I was in Milwaukee. I was on my, I was on my break, telephone company. I was a foreman for the telephone company. I was sitting reading my Bible. I read this. It was it was this day of the year. It was the 16th of February, 2000. No, 1978. Long time ago. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And they straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. I circled, forsook their nets. I was alone sitting in the big boy restaurant, Juno Village, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I circled it, forsook their nets, and I, I started crying. God is calling me to go full time for Him. I'd already, I was pastoring a church at that time, but I was working full time at the telephone company as a manager. And I started a church, and, and I, I, I worked for it. I actually did more work during a week. In a full week, I had a full-time job as a manager, and I did a good job as a manager for the phone company. But I worked more for the Lord than I did for the phone company. But now God was calling me to quit the phone company and just become a fishers of men. 1978, on this day, Juno Village. Sitting there, I circled it. I got that Bible somewhere in my house. I don't know. It's in a, I moved and everything, and now I'm here. I still got that Bible. It's a Rice Reference Bible. And I got it circled, the original one, where I circled it that day. And I wrote down there, and they forsook their nets and followed him. The moment I said, Lord, I'm going full time for you, guess what happened? Joe Lennon. You say, who's Joe Lennon? He was an ex-cop from New York. And he was a boss at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission. And I used to go to the Milwaukee Rescue Mission every Saturday, and I had a fisherman's club, soul winning club, fishing for men. And once a month, we, we had a meeting on a Wednesday night. We were, I think it was one, one, whatever, Monday, I think it was Wednesday night once a month. We, we had a fisherman's meeting there. We prayed, and I preached there 
and everything. And um, Joe Lennon, the the we used to call him superintendent. Then they call him a executive or whatever they did use now. But in the old days, when you run a rescue mission, you you were superintendent. That was the boss. He was superintendent. And, and he walked by my table. I'm sitting there crying. It just happened. I said, Joe, sit down, man. You with anybody? He said, no. He said, no. I says, man, look, Joe, I, I, just, I just read this. It's today's reading. It's today's reading in the Bible. Get a Bible reading chart. you see it's on there for this date, 16th, February. And uh, I said, look here. I circled this. He said, I'm, I'm, quitting, I'm quitting the phone company. <laughs> And I'm going into full-time Christian work. God just called me, and I just accepted it. He looked at me, looked at my eye. He says, I'm retiring from the rescue mission. He says, you love the rescue mission. You preach down there. and you." Uh, they even gave me an office. I had an office down there where I used to witness people all the time. He says, you need to think about it and take it over. I, mean, I, I, just, I just decided like a minute before. And God answered that right away. Amen. So I went back there and I went in them off there. And Joe asked me a couple of days later. He says, are you serious about that, Varga? Are you, you, you serious? And I says, yeah. He said, well, you need to talk to the president of the board of directors here. And I did. And they liked what, who I was and everything like this. And, and, uh, but that's when I started. I mean, I was winning souls already. But this verse about following Jesus. And I, I went into full-time fishing for men. Amen. And you know, every Christian ought to be a full-time fisherman for men. Ben, what you looking for? The, the preaching's up here, man. I, know. I don't. What you What you looking for? Looking around, looking around. I don't know. You, just pay attention up here. Somebody after you or what? You think someone will come get you? I don't know. Cliff can't hold the handle it together today. <laughs> He got a hold of something. <laughs> Jason didn't want to break a smile. <laughs> God bless you. But anyway, um, fishers of men. Every Christian ought to be a soul winner. My wife is the shyest, and, and, and she don't like to talk. She don't like no spotlight be brought upon her or anything. But she's a great soul winner. My wife can get after it and win souls. She learned about being filled with the Spirit. She wins souls all the time. She don't talk about it much or anything, but she's always trying to get somebody saved, and she gets them saved. She gets them saved. And some people, I, I'm working my, I talked to a person a half hour, told them every Bible verse, in the, and and a, a, a guy I got saved used to work for me, a drunk that got fired, and I got him hired back, and uh, and he got saved. and. And we went to visit his wife because she wasn't saved. And I talked to her for a half an hour. And I couldn't get nowhere. And I asked my wife, I said, honey, I said, you got anything to say to Linda? And uh, she's been sitting there praying all the time. She says, Linda, you need to get saved. And Linda says, yeah, I do. And she started crying and got saved. <laughs> you know why that happened? She's filled with the Holy Ghost. I wasn't. Amen. I just blabbering out verses. That's like I told you, I get sometimes I get a story started, I don't finish. Uh, Walter Wilson, that doctor, um, she read to me the other day, she said, because oh, I mentioned Walter Wilson about that thing. She said, he didn't really say it. She checked on it, and she said, uh, he didn't have, he had a ministry, he preached, but he couldn't win souls, and someone showed him he needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and once he got filled with the Holy Ghost, he was a soul winner. That's what you need. That's what I need. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get out all your wickedness. You think you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost with your smoking and drinking and, and sex perversion? You say, what's a sex pervert? Anybody having sex out of the holy guise of matrimony? That's a pervert. I don't like being a... I don't like being called a sex pervert. Then knock it off. And quit being one, huh? Yeah, just knock it off. Uh-huh. Where'd that lady go to sitting back there? Oh, she's there. Oh, she's just ducking down. <laughs> okay, Shorty, I'm sorry. She's sitting behind that big fat man. I can't see her. <laughs> I can call him a big fat man because he's my friend. <laughs> he's not really that fat. He's pretty strong. I better watch what I say. Big, strong man. Big man, isn't it? Well, let you say that. She's there. 
Come after me and I'll make you fishers of men. I've been a fishers of men. I've been a soul winner over the I ain't won as many as I could, but I win them all the time. I try to win one every day. Most days I get someone saved. I tell you what, I'm telling someone every day. I go to McDonald's drive-thru, I tell them. I go to the restaurant. I, some of you guys have been around here that, that go with me places. I'm telling people about Jesus. Why? Because it's supposed to. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Most tell everybody that they say they accept it. Nah, most of them will reject it. But some of them will accept it. And you ain't going to get nobody to accept it if you don't tell anybody about it. Some of you claim to be a Christian. You ain't never told one soul how to be saved. Shame on you. You ought to hit the mourner's bench today and hit, hit an old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, forgive me. Fill me with thy spirit. I'm a saved person. i got to get others saved. Yeah, yeah. And straightway they forsook their debts and followed him. And I did that in 1978, and praise God. Full time, I've been doing it ever since. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fishers of men. Let's sing it. I will make you fishers of men. Come on. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me. If you follow me, I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. You can't be a fisher of men unless you're saved. That's your problem. You've never given your heart to God. You've never repented. You're still living in your sins. Would you get saved today? Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, glorious, blessed Savior, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. There's people here that aren't saved yet. They can't get others saved because they're not saved. They're indecisive. They're fearful. They've never really repented and turned from their sins. They haven't acknowledged that they're lost and repented, turned from their sins and called upon the Lord. Would you do it today? You say, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven because I've never really repented. I need to do it today. It's a free gift. You just got to be honest in your heart about your sin. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, Believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you call upon him now? God's speaking to you. That's the Holy Ghost. You know you're lost. You know Jesus died and rose again. All you have to do is repent and turn from your sins and pray this simple prayer. Lord, save me. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. Pray the prayer with me now, dear one. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turned from my sins receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Say, Pastor, God was calling me and I responded. I repented and turned from my sins today, gave my heart to Christ. And I called upon him this very morning to save me and I met it in my heart. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, just a pastor looking around. You say, I've done, made that decision and called upon him this morning. Would you just slip your hand up? Slip your hand up. Let me see it. Lift them up high. 
Lift him up high, lift him up high, lift him up high, lift him up high. Thank you. May put your hands down. Lord, we've got ten hands raised. Thank you. Mothers, there ought to be more raised. Ten hands raised. Thank you, Lord. You're in the soul saving business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pray these dear ones would be baptized shortly. Get into the Bible and tell others. Once we're saved, we're to tell others and get them saved. That's what it's all about. Nothing else matters. Thank you, Lord, for these. Thank you for the food. Bless our fellowship around the table. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.